Welcome. In this episode I'm going to make a back plate for the lathe to fit this ER32 collet chuck. But first I've got a problem with the lathe. This is the problem with the lathe. The, um, this, these are the, um, this lever engages the half nuts for thread cutting. The detent doesn't work. There is a detent, um, but the manual is poor, really poor. Let me show you. Right, here we go. This is the manual for this lathe, and I'll see if I can put up a scan. But uh, there is the detent, but it doesn't tell you anything about it. And if you look up that part code, 452, when you get on here, it says an M8 screw. But it doesn't tell you what it engages, how it works, where it engages. It's just, it's just poor. So what I think I'm gonna do is just see if I can fix it, drill a hole in here, tap it, put a, um, a ball detent that's easily serviceable because you can get to it from the outside. So, um, yeah, poor, very poor. Right, so this is what I've got. Um, there's the handle. Uh, there's a somewhat manky roll pin, but I don't have a spare, so that roll pin is gonna go back in. Now, uh, I have a choice. Uh, I can put drill a hole through here, go straight through opposite the handle um, with uh, a hole big enough to fit that, a six millimeter ball bearing, followed by, whoops, followed by a cut down spring, followed by that arrangement, which will, so if this is this saddle, uh, it's a shovel of ball bearings, that's the saddle. We drill a, uh, a little hole in the saddle in the two places that I need it to lock, and uh, Bob's your auntie. There we go. So I'm using a, a drill just to mark the position, uh, to hold the, there we go. If all goes to plan, we should have two dimples. Hurrah. Okay. Now. Right, job done. Now, on to what I actually came here to do. This grut old bit of material, as we say here in Norfolk, is cast iron. Okay, so. That's a hundred and a bit long. Make a mark in the middle. Right, I'll continue to do that off camera because let's face it, it's as dull as ditch water. I have to say, I'm impressed with this little saw. That's just taken less than 10 minutes to go through that uh, four inch diameter at a chunk of um, uh, cast iron. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay, so I've got it in. Uh, this is the best way I can think of doing it. This is the biggest chuck I've got. Um, four jaw, and I've lined it up to run 
as best I can, bearing in mind that it's um, it's cast, cast iron. I mean, you can see that there's horrible grooves on it. So what we'll do is face it off. Fifty three point five. Spot on. Right, that's um done the bore. Off camera I've made a really crappy little tool holder um for to do the internal threads. My original tool holder that I uh, had a practice with just um well you can see it isn't long enough so um uh, and I'm not sure it would be rigid enough if I were to um, extend it out. So, hence I've made another one. I'll give you a close-up of that. This is the boring bar that I made. Um, if you're interested, and who knows, somebody might be, um, let me know. I'm, uh, I'm happy to make another one because I didn't do this on camera. So um, if uh, somebody wants to see how I CNC'd that and how I actually went about making it, uh, let me know because I can always make another one. This one could do with a bit of cosmetic work. Anyway, if, you, if you're interested, let me know. Right, next up with uh, with this is to face it off again to make sure it's absolutely flat and then it needs to be bored out with a... Now I'll show you on this. Bored out with um, a relief um, mm, 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 diameter that um, the, these two faces are the important faces the back back of the flange and uh, the back of the boss I should say and the uh, uh, this internal diameter because the internal diameter is what sets its eccentricity and it butts up against the rear flange and that internal diameter is what holds the chuck in exactly the same place each time you can't rely on the threads. The threads will always wobble it over a bit. So, hence, hence why this particular um, lathe nose spindle has a, um, a round register and a flat register. That's uh, just a standard. I think that's the biggest boring bar I've got. Yeah. So now we just need to um, take that inner diameter out to fit the lay spindle. I've measured the internal bore diameter with a set of bore gauges and um, done some accurate measuring of uh, my back plate, my three jaw chuck and my four jaw chuck and taken an average of all three which for the life of me I can't find. Here we go. So I had 57.92, 57.91, 57.98. Average those out and 
we're looking at well I think 58 dead is going to be close but what I'll do is go out to 57.9 no, it's got to be 58 dead. If I don't do it 58 dead, I won't have enough clearance because you, I will need a tiny bit of clearance. But we'll tr we'll try it at a, uh, a Nats cock under 58 and uh, try it, see if I can get it to fit. If not, we can soon bore a bit more out. So let me get on with that. The top side hit, top slide, has been offset by about one degree this way. So um, that means that. The uh, uh, <coughs> moving the top slide a long way only moves it a tiny way this way. So, uh, and I've put a, a dial test indicator on there so that I can see exactly how far I've moved it. Um, so we can use the standard cross slide to get us within the ballpark and then we do really fine work with the top slide. The only way I can think of to actually measure how far the top slide and the tool has moved in. Right, that should be a nice easy way to catch the thread. Right, took out a, a tiny uh, bit, bit of a speed more. Uh, now measures 0 0.03 under size. So um, let's see if it fits. Oh, I can you can feel it straightening up when it hits the uh, hits that um, flange. So there we go. That is absolutely spot on. Goodbye. That excellent. I have got um, my roughing tool in. Um, we have. I've used a strap clamp for the moment because I don't have any other method of severely pulling that on nice and tightly. Um, so it's now absolutely flat against the back, um, the the back flange. So now I can just face it off. Off camera, I took the blank on and off a couple of three times, and uh, put it. When I put it back on, I measured it to make sure that it was uh, the run out was correct, so that we know that it will always be in the same place whenever you put it back on the on the uh, machine. So I think after taking the taking this back plate off, cleaning it, putting it back on, uh, I've measured the run out at 0 0.005 millimeters. I don't know what that is in in inferior. Not a lot. Good enough for this sort of machine. Good enough for a hobby machinist, that's for sure. Excellent. That's going to fit on there quite nicely. I've worked out what the PCD pitch circle diameter of these um, these mounting holes is, and um, 40 mil in this case. And what I'm going to do is drill three uh, M6 tapped holes in that face, which uh, uh, will allow a little bit of wobble. In other words, I can take out the eccentricity completely when it's on the lathe. Um, on this face, I'm going to put. 
three uh, 10 millimeter diameter holes so I can put a little Tommy bar in to, to tighten and loosen the, the, the chuck. And finally, I'm gonna put um, two M8 holes in this face to attach these clips that stop the uh, chuck from unscrewing if it's run backwards. I've put rotary table on, fourth axis, uh, and I've put a small chuck, uh, a small Jacobs chuck in the um, in the quill. So uh, now I need to line that centre of the quill up with the centre of the chuck uh, and zero the axis. Times 10 X axis. You can see the axis in the background is moving. Uh, times one, one division on here is, one division on this is 0 0.01 of a millimeter. I don't as yet have a um, have a, a Renishaw probe or any any other method of lining this thing up. So I have to resort to doing it like this. Zero degrees with the traditional mark. So if I uh, select X and I can zero that axis. So if I press the zero button on the head, there we go, we zeroed that. So if I do that for all of them and the fourth axis, zero, which is this little one here, now, if we select Z, uh, sorry, the X axis, I can move over the 40 mil that I need. There we go. 40 millimeters. Okay. Here we go. Right, just for giggles, I've decided to bore out the uh, ten millimeter hole. So I've um, I've set up a, a quick little um, boring cycle in the jolly old mill. So um, uh, I've drilled the first, I've bored the first one out. This is the second one, so let's, uh, let's see if this works. Full disclosure, the camera crapped out here and I'm afraid I haven't got any footage, so uh, moving on. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I have bored out the inside so we, you can uh, now put something all the way through so you, it will handle rod quite well. Um, yeah, seems all right. So um, I've also got the collet set. Not the greatest of quality, not too accurate, but good enough I suspect. So uh, let's, um, let's put that on the lathe and see how it goes. And that's about point zero, just under 0 0.02. Eight millimeter collet and eight millimeter ground bar. So let's uh, just make absolutely sure there's nothing in there. There's a fair 
bit there that is just a smidge over 0 0.05 millimeters I'm assuming that this ground bar is actually round and I have, don't really have any way of finding out um, but what I will do um, I'll just see if I can knock this uh, this eccentricity out and uh, yeah we'll see if I can improve that uh, after three or four minutes of, of fiddling that's not too bad the only thing that I um, after a bit of experience with this the only thing I think I'd change is uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to turn up a, another collar so that you had um, grub screws that you could adjust it would be I think quicker than using the end of my tommy bar here to knock it in it'd certainly be more accurate so um, I might do that anyway all told please the sponge for that that's come out a real tree excellent <laughs> Yep, pleased with that.